Hi guys, kid you not, as I started <laughs> to film this right now, it was literally 11 11. So I know that the topic of this video is something that needs to be shared. <laughs> so, um, this is just gonna be a real, like, really casual video. I'm not gonna set up the pet tripod, I'm just gonna hold it in my hand. So, let me get it, get comfortable. So, um, so just, you could set the phone aside and simply listen. Um, man, I'm breaking out. <laughs> simply listen to, um, you know, just what I'm saying. I'm not going to be showing anything or anything like that. So, um, I wanted to share the story of my spiritual awakening and, the thing with spiritual awakenings is, is there's multiple ones, okay? You have the initial awakening experience and then you have level ups, okay? So you'll have like experiences where you feel like you're going through some energetic shift and crazy stuff will happen or amazing things will happen or you'll meet certain people in your life that'll help you um, in the next phase of your journey. But I'm talking about the initial spiritual awakening experience that started everything okay so this is a semi-vulnerable story <laughs> um that i will be going into somewhat detail but for the sake of my privacy as well you know not too detailed okay so um in 2012 um the beginning of 2012 I, well, actually, this goes into 2011, to be honest. Um, I was going through, in 2011, I was going through a major shift in my career, okay? So keep in mind, 2011, um, I didn't have anything to do with tarot at all, okay? The version of myself in this, at that time frame, was very different. So in 2011, I was, um, I had converted back to the Catholic Church. Um, I was born again Christian for a few years from the age of like 14 through whatever our age I was at 2010. <laughs> um, and of like about, she's early 20s. And, um, I had converted back to the Catholic Church so that, you know, because at the time my husband, my boyfriend, he was my boyfriend at the time. Um, he was very heavily involved in the Catholic Church and I was opening up to the idea of going back. I was starting to have experiences with Mama Mary. Um, I was very attached to her prior to that, but she was starting to become more involved in my life. <clears throat> I was dreaming about her and... Um, my husband, you know, we were talking about marriage and our future. And so we had already been dating in 2011. We had already been dating four years. So we were already pretty established in our relationship. And we were talking about the future and getting married. And one of the big, big arguments that we had was what church are we going to get married in? And I wanted him to be born again Christian at the time, but I wasn't strong in my own walk as a born again Christian, so <laughs> he didn't take me seriously and he was more involved in the church than I was. So it just was natural that we kind of shifted more towards the Catholic church. And then when I started attending mass, I started to feel that love for the, the ritual side of the Catholic church and whatnot. So there was something about it that I just enjoyed and it made sense later on after my awakening happened why I was so drawn to the spiritual witchy aspect of the of the Catholic Church. But at that time frame in 2011 I was hearing the call from Mother Mary. She she had showed up in my dream a couple times. Um so I was already, you know, going through my classes to make my confirmation for the Catholic Church. And then in the late 2011, I started having a change of, um, a change of, 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 of want for my career. So at that time I was attending court reporting school. 
Um, I had already been going to court reporting school for quite a few years. Um, I made it up to 200 words per minute. I was typing 200 words per minute. Um, I was taking classes to um, type verbatim for people talking at, at the time because that's usually what the re requisite is to get your license. But I couldn't pass that test. I was, I think I was stuck at 200 words per minute for two years and you have to be at 225. So I was trying to pass that test to get to 225 and then to be able to test to get my license. And I just hit a wall and I was over it. My, my wrist started to hurt. I was getting signs of carpal tunnel. Um, and I just wasn't in love with the court reporting career anymore. So I made the really difficult decision to stop going to school for that. And that was really hard because um, at that time, my parents were paying for my tuition to go to school. So they were paying for school for me. Um, and I had to tell them I'm not interested in this path anymore. And knowing my parents, like I have to always have a plan. That's how they they raised me to always have a plan, you know, so um, around that same time frame when I was making the decision to stop going to court reporting school, I was feeling the call to attempt to do dispatch, the 911 dispatch. And so I was looking into it and the, there was a sheriff's, the sheriff's, one of the, for one of the counties out here, the sheriff's was hiring for 911 dispatchers. So I applied and they, um, scheduled an interview with me and they scheduled this and that and, the whole process through the dispatch thing was smooth rolling. It felt natural to me. Um, I feel like my experience of being in court reporting school and typing as fast as I do and the, the, the my ability to listen to four people talking at once and being able to type what they're all saying at the same time, <laughs> I think helped me with hearing the radio and being able to take the 911 calls. So the the practice tests, the interviews, everything went smoothly. Now, at this same time that I was in the process to become a 911 dispatcher, I was seeing 1111 everywhere. And I didn't know what the fuck 1111 meant. I didn't I was not spiritual. I was not on that path, right? But it was sticking out to me. And I remember telling my husband, um, you know, I keep seeing 111, 11, like, what is that? It was enough times to stick out that for someone who wasn't connected on the spiritual side like that, it stuck out to me, right? So I remember I would see it on the radio. I would hear it on the radio. <laughs> I would always catch the time. And even, kid you not, the, um, the, the department where I was testing and doing my, you know, my tests and all of that and my interviews was the, the address was 111. Um, so it was very apparent to me that something was sticking out and something was trying to get my attention. Okay. So I went through the process of dispatch. I passed, you know, everything. I passed the tests. I passed my interviews. I passed my, my, um, my lie detector test, I passed the psychological, well, I took the psych exam and this is where I hit my wall. So I took the psych exam and um, I remember they invited me in for a final interview with the chief. Um, and I interviewed with the chief and some other staff members. And then I remember they called me in and I literally got my conditional offer for the job. Um, and so I was signing my paperwork. Pretty much at that point, it's like, if everything else goes well with your background check, you will be hired on with the sheriff's department. So I was excited. I was like, dude, this is, this is amazing. This is the path I was supposed to take, right? So I signed my paperwork and I figured, okay, I'm going to get the job. And literally the next day, my background investigator called me and he said, what happened? And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, and just so you know, background investigators, you're assigned to a background investigator. They go through your entire life. <laughs> they interview people in your in your world. They they go deep in your background. And so he was a, he was assigned to me. And um, through this process, he, he would always say, "You're gonna get it. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do this." He was very supportive. And then that that phone call, the first thing he said was, "What happened?" And I said, I, "What?" <laughs> and he goes, "What did you say to your psych?" the psych interview and I and I go I answered all the questions truthfully you know I 
answer her questions and this and that. And he goes, well, she deemed you unfit for the job. So we got to take back that conditional offer. And I go, what? <laughs> and he says, you know, you failed your psych exam. You, we can't hire you. And I'm like, I was floored. Um, and so I kept going back and back in memory of the whole psych interview. And I was like, I was truthful. I was honest in everything. What, what would it have been? So I got off the phone with him and I was like going back and, you know, trying to remember all the things that I said and what was going on in my background. Like I didn't have anything negative in my background. And then it hit me. <laughs> So in the psych exam, one of the questions that she had asked was because when they go through your background, you have to be, you got to be truthful, right? And so there was a question on there about a past um, thing that happened. And um, I was honest with it because I didn't want it to come up in my lie detector test. So one of the questions was, it was, it was about, you know, like your past basically. So without getting super, like super personal with you guys, um, when I was young, I had a, something happen to me <laughs> when I was about 14. Um, I was pretty much miss like taken advantage of. Okay. And, um, it was against my will and I disclosed that information in my background because I was afraid that if it popped up in a question and it was in the lie detector, you know, what if I, you know, if I lied about it or whatever, so I put it down. Well, the thing about that is that had I not mentioned it, it wouldn't have popped up because I never took legal action on what happened. So it would have been as if it didn't exist because I had never mentioned it. It wouldn't have existed, right? Well, I mentioned it. So my integrity was there, but I guess it, it bit me in the ass, right? So I guess the psychologist deemed me unfit for the job because of the fact that I didn't seek um, therapy or counseling to deal with the traumatic experience that I went through. And so she felt I would be unfit to deal with traumatic experiences for people who were in maybe similar situations calling 911 for help. And that floored me. I was so angry. And you and you guys, those of you guys who have had pasts like that, if you have people who took advantage of you and this and that, you will always look at that person that took advantage of you as always fucking up your life. They fucked up your future. They messed with you. They were like a source of your depression. They're, they're always that person that you blame. And this, this person was always that person for me. <laughs> So I, I cried my eyes out for days and I was so upset because I felt he ruined my future again. He's, he will never leave me alone even though he's no longer around. He will always ruin my future. That's how I was thinking. And so I went through a depression after that. I think it was two months. I was so sad. My, my husband or my, he was my boyfriend at the time. He was very supportive and he goes, you know, you know, babe, maybe try it again. Try it again. Maybe you should seek some therapy and seek some counseling for it. Because now that it's in your background, it's you got to bring it up every single time you go through the process. So I remember it was I was in my room and I had my mom had randomly given me a card for therapy, like a therapist or whatever, because at the time my brother was going through some stuff and she had the business card and I remember, oh, I don't want to get emotional. She gave me the business card and it was the, the name of the facility where you could get therapy. And I remember when I sat there, I sat there, I was literally, I was sitting on the floor and I was already really depressed because I was like, you know, this guy fucked up my life. And um, I took the, the card and I made the phone call. And, um, you know, I think it's like, I think people that people who have gone through something like this, you guys will understand how hard that phone call is. <laughs> and I remember I, um, I made the phone call. I called the facility and I was like this. I couldn't even talk. I was so emotional. And she says, you know, it's okay. Take your time. 
she took my name and she didn't even ask me for what I was calling for because this, this facility, they did counseling for different reasons. It was for, you know, different types of trauma. And <laughs> she didn't ask me what the, what the source of my trauma was. She just said, we do our first 10 sessions are free. And then after that, we go based on your income and, you know, you could pay for a monthly visit. You could pay for a weekly visit, depending on your income. So I signed up and we made the, the first, um, my first session was going to be on a Wednesday, a Wednesday afternoon. And I remember I went that Wednesday and I met my therapist for the first time and Um, she told me her name was Anjali. Oh, God. As you guys know, like, <laughs> I feel so stupid right now. As you guys know, like, when you go through something, those, those wounds are so deep. Oh, shit. I didn't want to cry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, let me get it together. <sighs> okay, when you go through something, those wounds are so deep. And it's almost like it's like you're reliving it over and over again. And it could be years, years, and you'll still feel like it was that same day. So anyways, <sighs> she told me that um, her name was Anjali. She was fucking angel, you guys. <laughs> she was an angel. And so, <sighs> and I'm sure she'll never forget me because every session I had with her, I was like this. I cried the entire hour every Wednesday. She never, she never saw me not crying. <laughs> so, Anyways, <laughs> so my sessions with her started and it was 12 o'clock every single Wednesday. And I did it every Wednesday, every week. I think I did it every week. I was, I see, I saw her for two and a half months until the, the 10 day, the 10 free sessions ended. And then I, I was going every other week and um, I was paying $50 for a session. And I was able to afford it because at the time I was working at the library, a little part-time job. So I was able to pay for it and um, and I needed it. I was in therapy for six, six to seven months. And every session I was in there, I cried. <laughs> it was a emotional release. Um, so like I said, at that time in 2012, I was 20... Let me think. <laughs> Let me try to figure this out. Uh, 2012 was seven years ago. I'm 33. 33. 30. 29, 28, 27, 26. I was 26. I was going through my quarter life crisis. And that is such a thing. <laughs> um, So I was 26. And this shit happened to me when I was 14. Which was over 10 years ago. At that point. And that shit still felt like it was that same. Like, like it... Like it had just happened. That's how triggered I was. And that's how hurt I was. So I, for 10 plus years, I held that shit in. And um, I had a lot of emotions to go through. And I cried my eyes out for every therapy session. And um, Anjali was a spiritual woman she was my she was probably a couple years older than me actually she was she was still like in training <laughs> and she was a spiritual person I remember she would wear she would wear now that I know what they are she would wear these bracelets with you know the crystal bracelets and she would have a buddha <laughs> she had a buddha in her room the room that I would meet with her in and <sighs> she and I remember one session she goes, you need to identify who you are. 
and I was always I was always defining myself as the girl that was broken, as the girl that grew up in an alcoholic family, as the girl who was mistreated by so and so, as the girl blah blah. I was always looking at myself and defining myself in the negative. And she goes, "You've when you talk to me, it sounds like you never you never embrace something that you love." What are your interests? You know? And I couldn't answer it. <laughs> and I told her, I go, I know you have to report stuff like this because, you know, in, in case I were to harm myself or whatever. But we got deep. I told her, you know, the times that I thought I wasn't worthy enough to be around anymore and just all of this bullshit. <laughs> I told her everything and she never reported me as a harm to myself or anything because she knew I was just simply healing and so I remember one of the sessions she was just like you gotta learn to take your mask off and really look at your life for who you are and around that time when I was having these sessions with Anjali um I was also, like, my, my free time, I was watching, like, YouTube videos and this and that. And I was always watching um, makeup videos. <laughs> that was, like, my thing. I was, like, totally into makeup tutorial videos. And I remember, you know, like, in YouTube, they'll put, like, a recommend recommendation for videos. One of Kellyanne Maddox's tarot videos popped up. <laughs> and I remember I just looked at it I looked at it I was like her thumbnail was like a picture of of her and if you guys know Kelly on Maddox you know she's you're she's very well known for her videos but she has a distinct look to herself she has like the dark black hair and the glasses and just she was like oh my god so interesting just to look at a picture of her so I was like okay let's see what is this all about <laughs> And I remember I clicked on her video and she was talking about tarot and this and that. And I was like, what tarot? And I had remembered I had a deck in my closet that I found at a at the at the donation bin in my job. And it was a tarot deck. I think I have it actually. <laughs> Let me get it out. Ugh. Let's see. <laughs> Here it is. It was the J the one JJ Swiss tarot. So um, I remember in the donation bin, the deck was there and I was so curious for no reason. I was like, and I remember I told my coworkers, I was like, I'm going to take it home. And they go, Ooh, be careful. <laughs> Cause you know, like the whole, the whole reputation tarot has for conjuring the demons or whatever. So I remember I took the deck home, <laughs> but I put it in my closet. I hid it in my closet because at the time, you know, my, my, my family is super Christian. They would not like, <laughs> they would not like that. So I hid it in my closet and then I forgot about it. Cause you know, I was one of those young girls. My mess, my room was messy and I literally forgot about it. So when I watched Kellyanne's video, um, I remembered the deck and I dug it out of my closet and it wasn't, I was like, I remember thinking, oh, this isn't, this is different from the one that Kellyanne uses. So I remember I was like paying attention to her videos and I was Googling like tarot cards and trying to figure out what was the name of the deck she used. And then I found out it's called the original Rider Waite. And... I remember I ordered it on Amazon <laughs> and that deck was $10 plus with the shipping included. It was a used deck. It was a used copy. And I remember I ordered it off Amazon and I was so nervous that, you know, when the mailman delivered it, that my parents were going to see it out. That's how sad it was, how sheltered and sad I was. Um, and I remember when that deck was delivered, it was the most magical thing because it was like I was holding in my hands the very deck that I saw a YouTuber that I love to watch use and I felt like this is 
that's what I'm supposed to learn. I don't know, it was just a weird thing. All while at the same time, I was seeing 11-11 everywhere still. I was going through this huge like tower moment. Um, now that I know what tarot is, the tower moment. I was going through therapy. I was doing emotional with like just literally letting it all out. I was crying all the time in my therapy sessions. Um, I was verbalizing everything that I had hold, held in in my mind, in my body, in my heart for 10 plus years. Um, there's only a select few people that I've ever told what happened to me. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. It was um, a, an experience. <laughs> And um, I, it just there's just something about being able to verbalize shit that gets that that's been hurting you and 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 stuff that you're embarrassed about that you're ashamed about. There's something about verbalizing it. It's a healing process. So after the six or seven months with Anjali, I I didn't I stopped going. Um, I couldn't really afford it anymore. I was like, I was getting into the tarot. And I feel like it was like that was a necessary step. So after my therapy sessions, I started really digging in deep with tarot. And that was like 2012 was the year I studied tarot. Um, and I studied it. I studied it. And then <laughs> um, I studied it for a year and a half. I did free readings on my blogs, this and that. And I was going through that healing process. I was literally going through it. And then as you guys know, you know, I started selling my readings at, in 2014 and I've been doing it ever since. And my spiritual awakening literally happened that day. I feel like it was already starting to form, but my awakening happened literally the day that I got the phone call that I was um, disqualified from the dispatch job because of not seeking counseling for a trauma. And when I tell you guys and when I tell my clients that there is always a silver lining to every bullshit experience you go through, it's so true. <laughs> and sometimes it takes years to see that silver lining, but it's there. And so at that time when I got disqualified, I was so upset. I was I was crying and I was depressed. I was angry, <laughs> but then I look back on it and I was like, that was the beginning of my awakening. If I had not been disqualified, I would never have seeked therapy and I would never have met Anjali and, uh, and I wouldn't have questioned my life and myself and my identity and my interests the way I did. Would I have stumbled on tarot? Let's take it a deep, a, 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 even deeper, a step deeper. If I had never met so-and-so, if I had never gone through that two-year experience that I went through with so-and-so, I wouldn't have been disqualified from the dispatch job because there wouldn't have been a reason to be disqualified. And then I would never have had to seek therapy. And I would never have met Anjali. And would I ever have discovered tarot? So you really have to think about it. <laughs> and I mean, when I met that person, that was I was 14 years old. That's a long time ago, right? I was 26 when I started this awakening process and when I started discover when I discovered tarot, I was 26. So from 14 to 26, that's that's 12 years. That's 12 years. <laughs> and the, that was 12 years of emotional hell. <laughs> um, I didn't know who I was. I was very promiscuous. I was always seeking love and attention from, from men. Um, I was layering on layers and layers of, of protection. Um, it was a lot of hell. <laughs> there was a lot of good other good things. There was good experiences there too. I won't I won't, you know, deny that, but that event, that experience with him ripped my 
world apart. And <laughs> I just feel like if there is a silver lining, like that was my shadow work. That was I, that was actually one of the shadow work things that I that I've done since um when I took a shadow work course. <clears throat> was dealing with that and I was able to discover the silver lining and when I finally discovered the silver lining I was like oh shit you know I was able to look at the situation and to look at this person and forgive them that was big for me because for years I he was the source of all of the blame that I would put I looked at him as you fucking ruined my life and now I can look at him as, as much as you freaking hurt me, you also planted the seed to spark my spiritual awakening. It's so weird. <laughs> so, whew, I don't want to cry again. Um, but yeah, you guys, I wanted to share that. I wanted to share that experience because it was... It was crazy. Um, I think I, I come on here a lot and I talk about things and a lot of you guys say, oh, I love your down to earth personality and you're so happy and you're so, you know, but I also like to come on here and show you guys the dark parts <laughs> so that you realize that I have dark parts, you know, I have a past, I have pain. Um, it's, and the spiritual awakenings for some people, it's amazing. Mine was amazing. I'm not going to discount it <laughs> for some people though. It's just full blown positivity all around. But a lot of times when you're going through a spiritual awakening, a cleanse, a tower moment, it's not all glam, <laughs> It's not all glam. It's not all positivity. It's not all happiness and joy and amazingness. It's dirt. It's dirt. It's grime. It is darkness. It's pain. It's tears. It is purging. It is release. Healing is not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. Because you have to be challenged, right? You have to be challenged to heal and to grow and to evolve. And there's no time limit for it either. It took me a long time <laughs> to heal from something that happened to me at 14. It took me 12 years to come full circle. And it came. It, it took me even longer after that 12 years to come full circle and realize the silver lining. So I guess I just wanted to share this story with you guys um, because I know a lot of you guys would, would ask me questions on how, what was my spiritual awakening like? <laughs> and I, and I've give this, I've given the sugar coated explanation of a spiritual awakening, the 11, 11, you know, discovering the tarot, but this is the raw, this was everything else. And the spiritual awakening experience as beautiful and as amazing as it was. Yeah, the tarot part was amazing. Discovering my, my life purpose. Discovering more about myself. Meeting my spirit guides. Being able to open up my mediumship. All of that's beautiful. But I also had to travel through the murky stuff. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. So... <laughs> Thank you for putting up with the tears. I can't, I don't think I can ever talk about my past or that experience without crying. He fucking ruined that piece of me. That will always be shattered. But I've always, but I've since then been able to put the pieces back together. And I have been able to utilize my past experience to help other people. I've had clients who have gone through similar shit that I did. And I feel like I was put here to be able to give that spiritual counseling, that those card readings um, on a deep level for some of those clients because I've been there. And um, Angelie was an angel to me. <laughs> she was a complete angel. And um, I don't know. 
I hope that, you know, certain people who come across my page or who get readings from me, I just saw 444, <laughs> Angel. <laughs> people who get readings from me, some of you guys will just, your readings are just like, whatever, okay, that was cool. But there's some of you guys who go deep and we go deep together. <laughs> and I, I've held space for you and I've cried, you know? So I just think that the other message I wanted to say before this gets too long is don't, you may have gone through something big. Don't discredit yourself, okay? If you were hurt, if you went through something traumatic, every single day is hard, but you power through it. It creates, it makes you who you are. Do not define yourself by your trauma. Don't let it hold you back and keep you from doing things that you think you are capable of doing. It is a stepping stone. It is experience to help you and you will find it full circle one point, whether it's two years, three years, 20 years. Okay? It takes time. It, like I said, it took me 12 years to come full circle and it took even longer to find the silver lining. So there's no timeline. There's no, there's no timeline. Don't rush it. Um, the, the power of healing is amazing. The power of forgiveness is even stronger. And just, by, just because I chose to forgive him for what he did to me, it does not mean, does not mean that I'm saying it was okay. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm saying, oh, I forgive you, but, and then I'm not saying that that's fine, that, that what he did to me was right. Hell no. But I forgive him because I can see now that that experience bloomed into what it is now. And I am so grateful to be able to be what I am and do what I do now. And I feel like I, I, I am who I am because of that experience. So I forgive him for the choices he made. I forgive him for the just the act, the experience, the two years. Um, I, I don't know. But it, whatever, whatever what it was, it was not right. <laughs> but I do forgive him. And I, and I am at peace with that. Yes, I'm emotional about it when I talk about it. I always will be. I'm human. But to come full circle and to see the silver lining and to see the, the, that there was a purpose to that experience is big. And I hope that you guys will be able to experience that for yourself in your own way. Um. And I guess the other thing I wanted to say is that your spiritual awakening is your own. Don't compare it to other people's. It's your own for a reason. And if your spiritual awakening is not sugar and lollipops and rainbows, that's okay. Mine wasn't. <laughs> you know, I sugar-coated it for other posts, like my spiritual awakening through discovering tarot. But I just told you the show, the story. It wasn't it wasn't glamorous. So if yours isn't glamorous, that's okay. It's okay. And if yours is glamorous, that's good. Um but there's always a shadow to things. Right? So anyways. <laughs> if you guys watch this whole video, thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable with me. Um I I needed to hold this space for myself. I feel better now that I got it out. I knew there was a reason why I started this video at 11.11. <laughs> so anyways, I will talk to you guys later. If you have questions about, you know, what I talked about or spiritual awakenings or anything, leave a comment. If you don't feel comfortable, excuse me, <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable leaving a public comment, you can also email me. So just check the description box for my email. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.